let's uh, uh, we'll we'll do some experimenting and see if we can get work through it. Maybe um, we'll develop some a little bit more expertise so this is like not so crappy. Also, uh, what I'll do is is probably set a time and tell people on my both of my Patreon pages. So I've got two Patreon pages, one for podcasts and one for videos. Um, and then I, because I kind of feel like this might fit into both, but we're hoping to scrape the audio later and put it into a podcast. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Oh, and um, I, I would imagine that whenever we do this again, that if people have subscribed to my channel and clicked the little bell, that they'll get an email notification that this is going on. Um, now, Sean and I have been working on this book for the better part of a year now. And uh, uh, we have the book about 85% complete, maybe even more than 85% at this point. And we've been posting chapters uh, out at uh, permies.com. So there are some private forums there. And so for everybody who signed up for the daily-ish email, there's a private forum for that. And we've posted quite a few chapters there. Um, and then there's the Pi forum for people that have Pi. Um, then uh, there's, you know, we've posted a couple there. There's the secret inner circle forum, which is for people that have um, uh, supported my past Kickstarters. And this, they have a private forum. And so I've post, we've posted some there. And then there's the secret minion army forum. And this is for people um, that have been promoted to be pollinators. So the people that the staff at permuse.com have selected. And of course, the staff have access to all these forums. And so the, then there's the staff at, at Permies. Um, oh, look, we've got somebody who's offering to help with further testing. So Sean, would you be OK with talking to some of these people so, to get this stuff kind of figured out? Sure will. OK. Neat. Um, uh, so you guys uh, tell Sean stuff. Sean will write things down or something, copy and paste, and he'll be able to talk to you. Um, uh, and, and Sean, I'm kind of figuring that you're going to be keeping up on all these um, chat thingamabobs here. All right. Um, so those are the places we've been posting the chapters. and. Um, we also, on the podcast, uh, we've already put out the introduction. And so that's available in a podcast form already. And I then... That was um, a podcast 412. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're, we're in the 400s now on podcasts. Um, uh, but I, and I, I kind of... There's so many things I want to do with podcasts, and I haven't been doing them um, because we've been busy... Not only with this book, but also with the pep stuff, uh, and we got a whole forum dedicated to the pep stuff. That's a public forum. But um, uh, I'm we're, I'm putting uh, about equal time in on each, and then of course, with those two combined, there's probably about seven times more time that goes into all kinds of other stuff day to day. Um, uh, you know, good time to mention that the forums. Uh, hey, in fact, um, for you guys in the chat world, have you been uh, noticing lots of new features out at the forums? I mean, I think. We've made some really great progress lately. Um, oh, and, and maybe I should uh, point out that, uh, I mean, it is that it's after Thanksgiving and before Christmas. Uh, this is where we normally sell tons of the, the permaculture playing cards, like 5,000 decks. Um, but this year, I'm not even going to try to let people know about it. It's like you either know or you don't know. And, um, but we are, I think uh, tomorrow is the day that I raise all the prices on all the decks of cards. And so rather than trying to actively get, let people know about the cards and then sell them and whatever else, I'm just going to, and then I have to buy new cards every two years. Uh, instead, I'm going to just take the inventory that I have left and just let it last for 10 years by raising the price really high. Um, I want to... Um, I, I want to infect more brains and have there be like a um, uh, hundred thousand decks printed and you know getting into so many more brains and stuff. But I just don't have the time, and I'm having such a hard time. Um, you know, I yeah, I, I think it's time to let it go on autopilot. Um, 
it's uh, the the return has been um, you know like I'll put a whole bunch of time into it and sell five thousand decks, and I think that I would rather focus on what we're working on, which is to to write a new book, and uh, and write new books, put out new new big major content, and I gotta something's gotta go. I gotta choose one or the other. If there were somebody that was some sort of marketing expert or something, um, we could do that, but um, I've already put like all my other content out on uh, with 50% affiliate fee stuff. And um, there have been some people that have sold like the Rocket Ovens DVDs. Um, I think mean, there's a guy named Darren that's done a good job with that, but very few people have actually done stuff to, to sell it. So it's kind of like, well, yeah, there you go. Um, anyway, that's another story for another day. All right, uh, I, I want to get into uh, what I want to do is I'm going to read a paragraph and then we'll see if you, Sean, have anything to say about the paragraph, or maybe I'll have something to say about the paragraph, or maybe people want to say things about the paragraph, but I guess they're on some sort of delay. It's like a 30-second delay here or something, isn't it? Not quite, but it's, yeah, it's not awesome. Yeah. But we will get them. Okay. All right. Uh, so this one uh, is um, for the part two of the like section no, that's not right the right word part two of the book um, but it's called moving way beyond recycling recycling has been around for a long time depending on how you define recycling maybe forever nature is an expert recycler there is no such thing as waste in a natural system if nature was not so good at recycling, we'd be standing atop a mountain of dead trees, dead bodies, and a slime mountain made of expired bacteria that just never got taken care of. For most of living history, humanity's waste footprint on the earth was basically non-existent. Then we learned how to do things with oil, like creating plastic and styrofoam and a whole bunch of other convenient and modern things that, coincidentally, take a really really long time to break down. Okay, that was the first paragraph. I, I kind of feel like one of the things that we've been really good at is we will share this one. And and which which forum did we share this chapter in? We shared this chapter in the Dailyish forum. Okay, so if you go out to the Dailyish forum right now, and the only way you'll be able to see it is if you are subscribed to the Dailyish email and you have a full account on Permies. And once you're logged in, you'll be able to see that there's this forum called the, uh, the Dailyish. And then in there is going to be this chapter. And then you'll have the ability to comment on it. And so um, uh, that way, the written comments are more likely to make it into the, into the chapter. Um, so please give us your feedback. And I believe that the version that's out there might be a slightly old version, because I know just before we started this whole mess, is when we um, uh, uh, decided, hey, let's try that YouTube thing and see if we can get it to work. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. That, so that, the one that was out there, we put up there quite a number of months ago. So we've uh, done some improving, but yeah, it'd be great to hear what people think. Jeremy's online. Um, he's he's uh, cool. one of the ants here at, at Wheaton Labs. And um, all right. I wonder if he's here at base camp right now. Uh, All right, so the next, the next paragraph. The mountains of garbage that we've been piling up over the last 100 years are turning into environmental disasters beyond something we can ever repair. Recycling was our first attempt to mitigate this problem. This system has evolved over the years and reduced our garbage problems, but wait! At the same time, we've increased the amount of garbage that the average adult produces. And a lot of our recycling paths are breaking down because they are overloaded. Some of it just gets put into landfills anyway. So we are recycling now, but the problems are even worse. All right. Next up comes the attack of the pizza box. And so this is, I, I basically read something somewhere but by the way, um, a lot of people throw around this phrase, 
or this word. They've actually made it into one, to a single word called zero waste. Yeah. And, uh, and it's kind of like, it reminds me of that movie, No Impact Man, but he totally makes an impact. And in No Impact Man, he's like, starts burning candles in his house. Like, see, I'm not making an impact because I'm not using electricity. I'm, I'm lighting things with, with a candle. And it's kind of like, dude, I, I, I think you've made things way worse. That's that candle has a much larger impact. And the, not only is the quality of light kind of shitty, but on top of that, um, you're, you're kind of polluting your air. There's stuff going into the air from that candle. Um, and, and it's more than vanilla. <laughs> and, but, but it, on, even worse than that, you're in the same room with that candle and you need oxygen and this candle also needs oxygen and it's kind of a race to the death isn't it having a candle burn in there and it's like here's a great idea let's let's have a house that's like a ziploc bag we've made it we, we've sealed all the windows and doors and everything wow such a tight seal for efficiency of heat because all we use is convective heat and then let's light a bunch of candles in there <laughs> not only does it make the room stink of smoke and you know whatever scent is with all the different candles, how well do they all mix together really but but beyond that it's like it's it's slowly converting all of the oxygen in the room into carbon dioxide poisoning you and so <clears throat> i think no impact man is uh he's shifted his impact from electricity and all of the toxic nightmare that's on the other end of that wire into a toxic nightmare going on in his own home and and nightmare might be an extreme word but i guess it depends on how many candles you're using and how long you let them run and it, and and how well sealed your house is i mean do you have a, a window open or something to, to, to do this so um and and then there's the impact of like okay well what where did that wax come from what's this what's the story on that what kind of toxic shit storm went into that wax and then, like, let's hold a ruler up to the toxic shitstorm for the candle and then hold that same ruler up over here onto the light bulb. So, uh, all right. <clears throat> I think the other thing, the other thing is that this, this chapter kind of comes out of there's a lot of people who I talk to, and I'm sure who you talk to, too, who are excited to talk about doing their part for the environment by recycling. And it's like, such a level one thing it makes me sad and then i talk to people who are like oh you know it's totally fine like i'm recycling i'm doing my part see i used plastic but don't worry it's getting made into another plastic bottle so it's like a net zero but then they don't talk about how much energy goes into it and how much work and all of the toxic stuff that's involved with that and so I just want to say, yeah, recycling good. We can do better. A big part of this book is that when we, when we go to make a chapter like this, we start off with, a, with like a, a 10 pages. And then it's like in no time at all, we want to take it out to 400 pages for just this one chapter. And then, and then we are... Between you and I, the debate begins. What are we going to cut? I mean, for a chapter like this, it, we really, in order to get the whole book to fit into 200 pages, which is our goal, we got to get this chapter down to three pages. And, and it's like, um, so what are we going to cut? What are we going to whittle out? And so what we end up with is a chapter that's very dense. So we took a lot of stuff where it was four or five paragraphs and we condensed it down to a sentence, which we think was a pretty rich sentence um and it, and it took us a long time to get there so i i kind of i'm 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 very i want to use the word proud i'm very proud of what we've accomplished like with this chapter and with so many of the chapters that we've worked on because we've managed to to get it to be a, a far more information dense kind of thing some someone in chat says i don't think you should cut nada i like big books <laughs> it's, it's sung to that song i like big butts <laughs> well the next comment is and i cannot lie so yes i'm guessing so <laughs> okay um, so i think yes pe they, there are people kind of like me who enjoy big books um but i think that our goal with this is to reach 
a larger audience and that's why we're trying to hone everything as much as we can to try and reach it, as many people as possible i think it was about five months ago as we're in the middle of writing the book and repolishing 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 we got the idea that it's like this book is not for preaching to the choir um and, and it's like because and, and so we got the idea that what we want is we want to do something kind of like what we do with the playing cards with the bur with the permaculture playing cards most of the cards are sold when people are buying them by the dozen and and so because they're giving them away to other people and it's like that is kind of the same thing we want to do and so somebody might buy a hundred copies of this book and then they've got a hundred different people they're going to send a copy of the book to and so we're working really hard to get it to fit into 200 pages and so our we're assuming that our reader is not part of our audience. They're not part of the choir. We're assuming that our, our reader is uh, somebody uh, who is either at level one or they're at level zero. Um, they're, they're, this is not their thing. And so we're, we're kind of trying to be very careful to direct our words towards people that are, that are not part of our regular choir. But we love you, choir. Yes. You guys are magnificent. You make it all happen for us. Yay. Okay. <clears throat> I'm now going to read more of this chapter. Go. Let's see. We've already done two whole paragraphs. Next up is the attack of the pizza box. And now before I read this chapter, I want to say seven out of their stories. But one of them is, is I was presenting uh, in Missoula uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, I went to a presentation, um, and and uh, it was pretty well populated. It was on zero waste, and I kind of felt like I, I mean, the the thing that hurt me the most is these people were so very very happy, <laughs> and I well, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, I'm happy that they're happy, and I I worked very hard to not make them sad because I felt like the words that I had to say would just make them sad. And um, the, the, the things that they were doing w were definitely positive things. But in other ways, they're kind of making the problem worse. And I, I kind of felt like I wish this book was already done. I could give them my book or something. Um, and my book might make them a little bit sad, but hopefully it'll provide more upsides than downsides. So setting that story aside, and I think I talked about that in my last podcast um, in a lot more detail. Uh, but... The other thing is, is that somebody on the internet asked this perfectly innocent question about, uh, okay, I'm, I'm into, you know, eco living and recycling. And so what do I do with the pizza box? Um, and so that's, that's, that's what we're writing about now. So let me, let me just go ahead and, uh, and read this part. Somebody asked on the internet, what should I do with pizza boxes? Because there is food on the cardboard. We are not allowed to recycle it. The answer with the most likes frustrated me. I felt that they were talking, whoops, I felt that they were taking one problem and converting it to a different problem. Use the cardboard as a mulch in your garden. The problem with this is that the paper in the cardboard is loaded with toxic gick. But clearly, most people are not aware of this. The next most popular answer was a 100% solution. Stop having pizza delivered. But on the downside, I very much wish, and that was worded poorly. We got a, hey, hey uh, um, uh, Sean, make a note. <laughs> we got to take a look at how this, how this paragraph is worded. Okay. So the next most popular answer was a 100% solution. Stop having pizza delivered. On the downside, I very much wish for people to live in a more luxuriant life while making the world a better place. Not sacrificing the small things that bring joy. I think that rather than the short answer of don't, let's instead spend years exploring the thought, what would be a more luxuriant life such that I don't even want pizza delivered anymore? So... I think in the introduction we talk about this a lot, um, and it gets a little it gets peppered in 
throughout the book so much that we've been deleting it throughout the rest of the book. <laughs> and that is the function of the book is rather than having a life of sacrifice to make for a better world, how do we have a more luxuriant life? And so um, we don't talk about it here because we have, we've already whittled it out seven times. But I think that the answer in this particular case is um, suppose that you live in a community that has people that are bonkers about gardening and people that are bonkers about cooking. And then 90% um, of the ingredients are, are grown or provided on site. And so then um, if you've got all the ingredients and you've got people there that are bonkers about cooking and, uh, and then they make pizza, they have, they have a pizza party of homemade pizza where 90% of the ingredients come off the land. Um, I mean, what's your interest now in getting pizza delivered? Um, and so then one could say, well, then, you know, more work or less work or whatever. And it's kind of like, well, you had to put some money into buying that pizza to have it delivered, right? And um, I think there's something we said, too, about the community element that you get if you're living with a bunch of people. But And, I, and granted, not, not everything in the book is about like, oh, go live in a community. I think that's Actually, limited maybe 5 or 10% of the book. I would say even less than 5%. We... We tried to be very careful about that because we know it's a, like it's a big solution. It's an important solution. And yet, in order to talk about it more than just a little bit, it needs at least a whole book to itself. And, you know, that's not what this book is about. So. Right. So um, the key is, is that I think that in our book, we I mean, I think that there are going to be times where you could try to possibly sacrifice something. But in, in short order, it turns into a luxury. Um, but I think most of the things we advocate are either going to be no change and you get more money in your pocket, like no change in the luxury department, or you get a big luxury boost and more money in your pocket. Um, so let's move on. Okay. Uh, okay. Since people reading something like this on the internet will not accept an answer that doesn't fit into a bumper sticker, we move on to what I think was the best bumper sticker answer. Use the cardboard as a fire starter. This was sadly the least liked answer. I wish it had many more likes and also said, for a rocket mass heater, which would also eliminate any smoky pollution that would result from burning the cardboard somewhere else. Well, we'll talk more about rocket mass heaters and their incredible efficiency later. Um, <clears throat> I've got so many more YouTube videos planned that I wish to make that um, address all these different things about rocket mass heaters. I mean, currently we've got, uh, I think it's nine videos that are part of the rocket mass he rocket mass heaters uh, myths series, and um, uh, and I kind of feel like I need to take each of those and work them into one of my little two minute animation kind of a things. Absolutely. But yeah, uh, and, but it's like it, it takes it takes time, and I'm I'm kind of spreading myself a little too thin these days. So. Um, <laughs> so I, I like actually, every day. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and and then there's all the other things going on too, uh, and so, um, ooh, so much happening, um, uh, and, and of course everybody wants me to make more videos and uh, make more podcasts and write more articles and make more books and more DVDs, and yet something's got to give, um, and I'm glad Sean, you're taking on the lion's share of work to get this book out, yay! So it's moving forward. Thank you, Sean. Everybody thanks Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Just pour it on out there. Okay. Let's see. Now, uh, the next section in, the, in this chapter, recycling 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, and 5.0. Most recycling systems are composed of three bins. A black bin for garbage, a blue bin for recyclables, and a green bin for compostables. Let's start by saying that a person at eco level zero, and there's something I don't have a YouTube video out, out about, and that is the Wheaton Eco Scale. Um, 
uh, well, actually, you know what? I do from a, from like a really long time ago, from before the cool graphic was made. Uh, but but now there's right. a cool graphic. I should take that cool graphic and somehow Smash work it, it into a, a cool video. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> let's start by saying that if a person, Nico level zero, puts absolutely everything in the black bin, if they're allowed to. Uh, for example's sake, let's say they put in 100 units of waste. Now let's think of this as a game. We want to have the lowest score in town, a unit of waste in the blue, uh, in the blue or green bins counts as one point. A unit of waste in the black bin counts as four points. I think this is so it's not in the book, but I think this is an important thing. When you put it into the recycling bin, that's that's not a slam dunk. No. There's there's still a lot of industry and stuff that has to go on when it goes into the recycling bin. Re I mean, but it's it's four times better than going into the garbage, but it's not like magically perfect or anything like that. Um, and and I think that the same thing has goes on for the green bin. Um, and we're gonna and we're gonna actually touch on that here in a moment. <clears throat> okay. So a unit of waste in the black bin counts as four points. So the maximum possible score is 400 points. And we start off by proposing that a, a person at, at eco level zero uh, is going to have 400 points. The folks at eco level one will be trying some recycling. They might reduce the amount of waste going into the black bin by half and will redirect the waste into the blue bin and the green bin. Let's say 50 units in the black bin, 30 units in the blue bin, and 20 units in the green bin. Their score is now 250 points. A person at eco level 2 will take it up a notch. Reduce, reuse, repair, recycle is a list of things they do in that order. And because uh, you guys don't have the book in front of you, I'm going to just say it one more time. Reduce, so just using less stuff, reuse, um, let's use that thing again and again and again, or, or uh, yard sales and the like, um, uh, the goodwill. Repair, not everybody's great at repairing, but yeah, it's up there. And then finally, if all those don't work out, then recycle. So that order is important. It's very important. So then at equal, I'm saying at equal level two, that's when they embrace that order and they start doing much better in that. Uh, they begin repairing old clothing and tools. They buy some things at the thrift store. They hold a yard sale and attend numerous others. They make conscious buying decisions to have more durable products and lower package waste. They realize that homemade meals are far more enjoyable than highly processed packaged meals uh, from the store. They significantly reduce the number of plastic beverage bottles in their house. Anything papery is used as a fire starter in the wintertime, saving a bunch of work chopping kindling. 25 units go into the black bin, 15 units in the blue bin, and 10 units into the green bin, green bin 125 points. So we're down to 125 points from 400 points. But if you put everything into the blue and green bins, that would be 100 points. So we're, we're rapidly uh, closing in on the minimum if you still use those bins. Yep. At eco level three, a person is starting to grow their own food, reducing the amount of food packaging in their house further. They have implemented reuse and repair such that they don't buy nearly so much stuff anymore. They have eliminated water bottles by 95% or more. They have set up a free shed in their neighborhood where one person's junk can become another person's treasure. They have reduced the amount of cheap electronics then buy, they buy, opting instead for devices that will last longer. You know, on the point of the, the free shed real quick, uh, we have a thing here we call it the free shelf. And um, and we're going to have to expand into uh, a free shed system when our berm sheds are uh, finished getting overhauled. <clears throat> but the idea is that we have two shelves. Uh, one shelf where we ask people to not add anything more. And then another shelf where we ask people to add things. 
And then um, eventually what happens is, is that everything on the shelf where things are being added uh, gets removed um, and, and thrown away. It goes, it goes to the dump. Um, but it, but instead of it going directly to the dump, it gets a chance for people to be able to, you know, take what they want. Although, rather than going to the dump, what I'm going to attempt to do is to expand it and make it so that the whole system is is larger. Um, and something that I currently talked to Sean about, which we took out of the book, was the idea of, like, what if dumps could have, like, four sheds that are kind of like this system, and there could be somebody at the dump that manages and populates the sheds and then and like the first shed is everything in in there is priced a certain amount and then so instead of it being a free shed it's it's more like uh uh let's see if we can get some money to support this guy you know who's fishing around in the dump um and then basically it's like uh so there's the priced stuff then there's the next shed is everything's half price and the next shed is 90 percent off and then there's a free shed and then uh, there's a, a fifth shed, which is um, also a free shed, which is currently getting its stuff moved into uh, back into the dump, or it's uh, currently being filled with stuff coming from the dump. But it seems like that could be somebody, like somebody might actually enjoy that job, and it could be relatively profitable, right. and it would reduce our consumption. Moving along with this paragraph, um, so let's see, I left it at, they have reduced the amount of cheap, uh, cheap electronics they buy, opting instead for devices that will last longer. They have also realized that the compost they have been getting from the town's composting service is filled with toxins, and so decide to make their own compost instead of using the green bin. Now, they have 12 units in the black bin and 12 units in the blue bin, 60 points. So, ta-da, we have now moved below 100 points. Now, this is one of the things I recently talked about in a podcast, at least I think I did. I hope I did. Um, my memory says I, I, I did, and maybe I'm old and feeble of the head. Um, but um, there was a very happy young woman who has a business set up in Missoula. And uh, she does everything on her bicycle, which I just oh, love yeah. the idea of that. So, so you're you're remembering the podcast. You're you're recalling oh. this podcast. Oh, I can't remember if you did it in a podcast or if you just told me about it. Okay. So, so um, she's so very happy. And so, what she does is that she goes to your house on her bicycle. I think maybe twice a week, and you pay her a certain amount per year, I guess. And she picks up your compostables. And then three times a year, she brings back compost. But it sounds like the compostables, if I understand this correctly, the compostables go to the city composting system. Right. And then the compost that's returned uh, uh, comes from the city composting system. So basically, uh, everything is homogenized. Everything is mixed together, right? Yeah. And so um, so you get, you know, the the... The organic compost. And that's one of the questions that I asked her during this thing. I'm just, I'm just some doofus in the audience, um, uh, and I, like, oh, I have a, I have a question. Can I ask a question? I just have a, so my question is, um, what do you do to separate the organic? This is my voice that I'm doing. <laughs> I'm, I'm emulating me. What do you, what do you do to separate the, uh, the organic compostables that you get from a client from the uh, non-organic, like, like. And then so she says they, they don't. They just mix them all together. And then um, so that means that uh, and the city compost is going to be mixed in with people's yard waste, which has a high probability of containing persistent herbicides, as well as the uh, I mean persistent herbicides. If you go and you eat a, a McDonald's hamburger, which I'm going to tell you is delicious, although because of my gallstone issues, I'm not allowed to eat any right now. Um, and so I'm not going to say that McDonald's people are like, oh, McDonald's, that's so bad. And it's like, well, that sure tastes good. And so, uh, but the problem with it is, is like the grain in the bun was made uh, with a grain that had been treated with persistent herbicides. So that means the bun contains persistent herbicides. I mean, these persistent herbicides go through animals, they go through the composting process. It's like, They're it's persistent. still there. So you go and, and you take these, you know, you, you go and you, uh, uh, 
uh, mulch your garden with McDonald's hamburger buns, or for that matter, any hamburger buns, it's not just McDonald's, that are not organic, then all your growies will die because of the persistent herbicides in those buns. And if you think that's bad, it gets even worse because those same grains are being fed to those cattle and it concentrates in their fat cells. And so now that, that burger actually has more persistent herbicides than the bun. And now you try to go and uh, mulch your garden with hamburger bun or with hamburgers without the buns, um, it, it'll kill your garden because of the persistent herbicides that are inside of it. And so it's like, okay, so that's a, that's a problem. <clears throat> and, but now we're taking you know, people and they're eating it. Um, nom, 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 nom. And then they're pooping. And, and then that goes into the Missoula sewage treatment plant where they fish it out and they move that into the city composting system. So again, uh, compost doesn't wipe out the persistent herbicides. And so now they've got this compost that's loaded with persistent herbicides. Um, and so it's kind of like, okay, so the city compost, plus there's other in, industrial wastes and things that are being dumped into the sewage treatment plant. And so uh, it's like, and then uh, not to mention the fact that uh, because of they're, they're using the sewage treatment plant, then the pharmaceuticals that are going through all these people are all ending up getting homogenized into this uh, compost as well. So I visited with a guy that, that did a bunch of testing on, the, on this you know, product from, from this composting system using all of these inputs throughout the city. And he, he was very adamant because uh, because here I was kind of asking all the questions that was pissing him off. And um, <clears throat> he was very adamant that it falls well within this compost from the zoo. It falls well within the government standards. And I said, yeah, but those standards are pretty loose and they're pretty accepting of ways for us to get rid of our, our all of our waste, right? And and so he's like, so it's, it's a standard. We got to have a standard somewhere. And I said, let me ask you this. Let's suppose that you took some home and you planted it in a garden. He's like, wait, I would never put this stuff on my garden. And, and it's like, <laughs> but that's what people are doing. And they're like, I'm, I'm raising an organic garden. I, instead of fertilizing with chemical fertilizers, I'm fertilizing with compost. It's organic. It says it right on the label. <laughs> 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 and it's like, Oh, that's pretty toxic. Don't don't put that on your garden. And and it's like so what they're raising is not organic at all. All right. So there was there was a bit of a tangent. The moral of the story is that if you're gonna compost, do your own composting. You're gonna you're gonna eat organic, you're gonna be very careful with what goes in it, and and that's what that's what you're gonna use. Now, yeah. uh, Sean, have you been reading all of the, the stuff that people have been saying here in the chatty chat yeah. chat? Is there stuff that we ought to talk about, or should I move on with uh, with eco level four? Someone says, "Any opinions about human ear compost?" And I responded with, "Many." <laughs> yes. Don't know if you wish to elaborate on that, but uh, I think we got a few podcasts on that one already. I think um, that is covered elsewhere quite thoroughly. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, we've got the. I mean the. We've got the video of the PDC available that was from a year ago, and uh, that that goes into a fair amount of detail on that topic. And but I even wish to expand on that even more. But I want to say that uh, Mr. Jenkins and the Humanor System, uh, tip of my hat. How do you do this without? Here's my hair. Uh, uh, tip tip of tip of that. Uh, I mean, he really blazed an amazing trail. And he's done so much for us. It's it's amazing. Uh, uh, just all good things, all good things. And thanks to his massive contribution, then uh, we can use that as a stepping stone into going even further. So, um, and I I kind of feel like what I really need to do is do a podcast with Fred. And so much much like Fred Rogers, Fred is a very uh, nice guy uh, here at Wheaton Labs, and, and he has got a, a rich history with human or system. And, and right now we're using what we call the willow feeder system as, uh, as an alternative. And I believe that the willow feeder system is better, but Fred makes some very good points in favor of the human or system. And so we got to have those discussions at some point. So Fred can represent for human or 
while I represent for the willow feeder system. Um, <clears throat> but I have to say that just shooting from the hip real quick, my primary concern uh, concerns about the human or system are that first, you've got a bucket of stuff you got to deal with uh, generally twice a week. And um, I don't like the idea of dealing with it. Uh, it's like, ew. And um, I, I'm, I'm concerned about uh, how there is sometimes odor. And, and, the, and when there's odor, I'm kind of feeling like that's not a more luxuriant life. I, I'm not granted. It's a low bar you're competing with because um, when somebody comes out of the bathroom, a lot of times there is odor. You know what I'm saying? Odor. Yep. Yeah, you know what, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I and it, my, my understanding is it's a it's not like it's just limited to my house. My understanding is it happens in other people's houses too. Uh, and, and so uh, I feel like, but it's like only for a little bit. Like, you know, you turn the fan on in there and 10 minutes later... It's uh, uh, been reduced 95%, so, you know, everything's going to be okay. Um, the human nervous system, it's like, okay, it's not as strong of an odor, but it is persistent. And, and so there's, there's that. The next thing is, is like, okay, you got this bucket, you know what's in it. I don't like the idea of carrying the bucket twice a week. It bugs me. Um, so, uh, but let's, but, okay, you got to do it. Then you get out there, and there's a compost pile. There's two things that bother me about the compost pile. Um, I mean, there are people that do an amazingly excellent, perfect job because they've got human discipline. That's going to be your top 4% of the population. And uh, they're going to uh, construct the pile in a facility that's going to be amazing and excellent, and it is not going... So like, and then there's, let's, let's leave them aside for a moment and let's talk about everybody else. They're going to put it into a pile that's just a pile. They're going to dump it on the top and they're going to cover it up with a high carbon material if it's handy, if they happen to have some high carbon material there and if they do a good job as opposed to like they do a quick job because they have something very important they need to do and this bucket is postponing this important task. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <clears throat> do you know what I mean, Sean? You know what I'm saying? Do you, do you know what I'm getting to here? Some ideas. Okay. All right. So you're on your way to go do something, and suddenly you realize that mountain that's already there cannot be added to. Therefore, the moment to empty the bucket is now, and I'm going to have to empty the bucket while walking kind of weird, you know. All right. So it's on the pile, and you've done a mediocre job of covering it up. That means flies can go over there and land on some of that stuff, and then they'll go over to Sean's house and walk all over his food. And then uh, let's say the person that did this had hep C. Congratulations, Sean. You get to have hep C also. I hope. Oh. Uh, isn't that exciting? Yeah. You get to learn all about it, read all about it. You get to go visit all these doctors and nurses and stuff. Congratulations. Yay. What a good time. Um, then the next thing is, is that, uh, oh, we have a gully washer of a rain event. Oh, man, big rain, big rain. Uh, and, and let's say that, like, in Missoula, the water table is pretty high. So it's like, yeah. you know, just uh, five to ten feet under the ground in some places. There's the water table. So um, and you have this big gully washer. And, and it rinses all of that stuff down into um, the, uh, the water table. Uh, now, uh, everybody in Missoula gets to drink poop Kool-Aid. Yay! That's got to be a good time, right? And uh, weren't we talking about hep C earlier? I wonder if that happens now. So, humanor is a big leap forward. And it, it does such good stuff, and it's such an improvement. Right. Um, and at the same time, I have some concerns about scalability. And, and I kind of feel like if everybody in Missoula did human or systems, I think that a lot of people in Missoula get really sick. And, and that's, that's not okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's the yeah, kind so, of thing. I, yeah. I believe, I believe someone can do it well. So there you go. Somebody, somebody 
pushed the button, you know, what do you think about humidor? And and so, ah, ah, let me get started. Ah, yeah. and, now well, I've got six more hours of stuff to say, but I'm going to well, stop. And we also, we have a chapter in our book about this exact topic. Oh, uh, and then there's that. So, and, and maybe, I mean, that's another thing too, is um, we kind of got to get some feedback on, on this about whether we should try and do this again. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if, if, if this is of value or not. Um, it seems like we did it in a podcast and I, I kind of thought that we would get like a dozen responses saying, yeah, let's do some more of that. And we got three. And they weren't even so much about like, yeah, do more of that. They're more like um, uh, uh, talking about the things that we said. And so, um, yeah. but I, I, I guess what I'm fishing for is, you know, is this is this of enough value to people? If if we get enough people saying, yeah, let's 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 kind of do these chapters and these kind of podcasty kind of things, then it's like, okay, yeah, we'll do that. All right. <clears throat> I am now going to talk about at eco level four. At eco level four, a person is growing 50% of their own food. Did this one already do? No, I don't think so. Really cutting down on food packaging. Uh, this person may live in community. Oh, I did do this one. This is the one I already did. Okay, so now let's talk about eco level five. Growing 90% of their own food, people at eco level five have nearly eliminated food packaging. They have eliminated most of the household products that aren't really needed. Most of their furniture and tools are handcrafted out of natural materials. They occasionally treat themselves to a bag of chips or a tub of ice cream, but otherwise are content to live the permaculture dream. They now put three units in the black bin and three units in the blue bin. They get their bins picked up once a year. 15 points. So we went from 400 points down to 15 points. Notice how we're not saying uh, something like um, zero waste or no impact man or something yeah. like that. What we're doing is we're saying like we could come a long ways. And I kind of feel like level five is for just a very few people. Um, you know, most people are going to maybe cap out at level four or something like that. But at, at level five, this is this is like you've really gone down and and also keep in mind that the scale goes to 10. <laughs> yes. By the time someone reaches eco level 5, they will reduce their total waste by 94%, drastically reducing pollution in the landscape. Beyond level 5, things get even better. That's it. That's the chapter. <gasps> Ta-da. Okay, now I'm going to read some of this stuff. Oh. Oh, it says, uh, please talk about Blackwater version of a willow tree. Please, more YouTube live things. Ooh, how do I find your podcast? So, uh, um, oh, you're going to give you're going to give a link? Yeah, it's below already. Um, I usually, oh, there it is. I see it. Okay. Um, and so it's permies.com slash F slash 88. So, um. That'll that'll do it. Um, let's see. I enjoy the YouTube style podcast. I like being able to see people while they are talking. You can pick up on subtle nonverbal things, like picking our nose and you know <laughs> whether or not we wear clothes when we do these things. <laughs> what what do we wear on days that we're not giving presentations? <laughs> it's still overalls. Yeah, you know, I gotta tell you, <laughs> every day. Um, so. There was one comment in here that said, "What is the beer plan?" Oh, I posted a link to our table of contents in the chat, so I think someone made their way over there. Ah, okay, all right. And all right. the beer plan is, you know, a secret, secret plan that people will like for reasons <laughs> that, you know, we're not quite sure what they are, but uh, <laughs> they're probably subliminal. <laughs> right, right, right. I, if I remember correctly, there is uh, 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 no alcohol in, in this. This is, but that makes it kind of sound like that beer that that. Oh, oh, oh! I screwed it all up, didn't I? Kind of makes it sound like that that 
beer that doesn't have any alcohol in it that apparently people don't like very much. Um, but I, uh, um, that, that comes from uh, the chapter on uh, uh, money stuff, right? And, yeah. and if I remember correctly, there was a point in time when we were working on all these things and, and you said that that was your favorite chapter. It, there was a time when I said that. I think, <laughs> I think that now we've done so much work, it's hard to pick a favorite. Um, but I still think, so the beer plan, we won't go into it now because spoilers, you know, come on, got to save something <laughs> for the book. Um, but it is what I think is the kind of strategy that would be most effective for the most people to retire early. Yeah. It's not a slam dunk for everyone, but I think it's a pretty darn good approach that doesn't involve nearly so much sacrifice as some of the other options. It depends on a person's day job, I suppose. So, and I'm kind of amazed at times how, like I'll visit with some people and I hear about their worky job and it's kind of like, it sounds like just misery, yeah. toiling in the mines kind of a thing. And then I'll talk to somebody else who has the exact same job, and it is the primary source of joy in their life. And right. they, they authentically enjoy their worky job. And um, so, I mean, that, that goes into a whole bunch of, discussion that is not in the book and um you know, isn't really part of this but um i uh i know that we've kind of talked about some of this in some of the past podcasts although i think that as we were writing that particular chapter we we did come up with some things that i don't think i've shared in a podcast or an article or anything else before that's right yeah yeah and so, like, for example, calling it the beer plan. Oh, that was excellent. I'm still. <laughs> it's like poetry. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that there's some stuff that comes from FIRE, which people will call uh, financial independence retire early, mm -hmm. which to me just reminds me of uh, Jacob Lund Fisker's book, Early Retirement Extreme, for yeah. which I have a podcast with Jacob Lund Fisker. That's right. um, talking about his book and it was like as I had just finished reading his book um, so uh, it's it's a wonderful book I hope everybody goes out and buys a copy um, <clears throat> and we've been talking to him a little bit learning about how uh, Amazon Kindle stuff works because we're coming out with a book you know all right um, have you been reading the here's somebody that, oh Jeremy says I love root beer that that's probably oh look there's lots of things about root beer yeah jeremy's uh, on your couch by the way in your living room <laughs> i could throw rocks at him from here uh, <clears throat> he says he really enjoys the uh the delay oh because he can hear me talking he hears you double yeah yeah um parallel messages okay there's too many things here for me to read so um sean have you, i'm going to assume that you've been reading this stuff is there anything else we should talk about I'm reading. Okay, all right. Well, all right. Jocelyn just posted some thing, nice links as well to early time and extreme stuff. Jeremy's saying he's going to throw rocks back at you. <laughs> he would. He totally would. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, um, I think it's. I think it's time to wrap this thing up. Anything Sounds else we good. want to put into this one? I mean, this was an experiment. Um, I imagine that the thing that goes up on YouTube will start off with 15 minutes of, of us saying, like, what's going on? How do we get this to work? What's, what's up? Maybe, what? maybe we can include some sort of link that says click here to go to to skip all of the yes. tech support stuff. Yep, the beginning stuff. And, and then Adrian will get this, and he'll probably edit out the first however many minutes, so that way the pod people don't have to suffer through our technical difficulties. Okay. Um, I do... You know, want to put a shout out to like uh, for the podcast stuff. 
Um, I think that uh, all of that is being like there's a, my Patreon account, and I gotta oh I gotta I gotta mention Ivan. He was the navigator. Uh, when we did our tour in 2012. Um, uh, so he came out and joined us for that month uh, of, of going right. on doing speaking gigs and stuff like that. But, but he has uh, way upped his pledge out at um, uh, my Patreon account. I think it's patreon.com slash Paul Wheaton is the one for podcasts. And I think yeah. the one for YouTube videos, which is kind of low right now. So I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to, trying to put more work into getting back into podcasts more than trying to get back into YouTube videos more. But that's at patreon.com slash pwvids. Um, and uh, I just did a thing where uh, everybody at, uh, at pwvids, for every dollar they've put in for all time, I gave them a gift code to the... Um, uh, uh, building a Cobb style rocket mass heater DVD as HD streaming. So they could, so people that have put in like $15 all time, I gave them 15 gift codes so they could go and give away 15 copies to people. Um, and then for the people that have been at the much older uh, Paul Wheaton, I gave them a whole bunch of gift codes too. Um, and it wasn't part of the deal or anything like that. It's just more like, um, I kind of, I kind of like, I'm kind of, I, I, at first I thought I would never groove on Patreon. It just seems so against the grain for me. <laughs> but after a while, when I start to look at like the reports and I see like, wow, this person has put in $300 and all they wanted to do is like, Hey, go make those podcasts, you know? And, it, and it's like, that's cool. Um, so it's rather than being like, let's set up a business arrangement. It was more like, I just felt grateful that, that they did that. And right. so I'm, I've, it seems like about two months ago, I gave a bunch of people a bunch of stuff too. I think it was world domination gardening, like people who'd put in a hundred dollars or more. I gave them all, uh, multiple copies, like gift codes for world domination. Gardening. Cool. Uh, <clears throat> All right, so we're going to do a Kickstarter, hopefully, on January 2nd That's and uh, for this book, um, because the book will be ready then. And uh, we're already uh, working on getting the video put together and stuff like that. Um, and uh, so I imagine that if people are signed up for the Daily-ish, then they're going to get an email soon that's going to say, like, okay, we kind of got a Kickstarter page put together. It's not live yet, but you can give us your feedback on like what's okay and not okay, what's dumb, what's cool, stuff like that. Um, and right now there's chapters of the book that are out there where we're asking for feedback and this is one of them. So if people have like, I want to suggest that you do reword it this way or something, that's cool. You know, we've got ways for you to, to make your suggestions and Sean will read them all. That's and, right. I yeah. will read them all. And I I've, I've seen Sean you like reply to every person's point too. <clears throat> Pretty much. There's been a few times where it somehow got lost cuz I had like six threads going in a day or something like that and somehow I missed an email from one of them and a few weeks later Paul says, well, "Why didn't you respond to this one?" <laughs> and I got to go back. And, oh, sorry everyone, my bad. <laughs> so, I'm very excited about the book. Wow, I and it's like uh, uh, another thing is that is that uh, on on Amazon Prime, I went as part of this book. It's like the um, one of the things we're addressing is carbon footprint stuff, and uh, and so of course the the standard is is that Al Gore had a movie out like ten years ago, and um, and so we've kind of addressed some of that. And now he's got a new movie. And so I thought, I'll watch this new movie. And, and it was like, it was, you know, politically oriented. It's like, let's, you know, do this political thing and then it'll make things better. And, and it's like, so it wasn't really our thing. But then Amazon said, oh, now that you watch that, you probably want to watch this other one. It's all about building a better world in your backyard. You know, kind of. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh that's terrifying. Somebody's already made our book. <laughs> And and then I watched the movie and I and I got the impression like no, we're okay <laughs> we're okay I I kind of felt like the stuff that that was in that guy's movie which is apparently about his book um, 
started off with a lot of stuff about meditation and then there was some stuff about um bi making your own biodiesel uh no wait no wait not making your own biodiesel it was like running on running your car on veggie oil so it had him driving out to get the veggie oil and um and and he did ride his bike a lot which is cool but it, it does, for a lot of people that's a sacrifice um and and so i kind of felt like our book is going to have like 20 times more stuff and i think it's going to be a lot more how to have a more luxuriant life yeah. while making i don't know i'm going to say 15 times better impact 15 you know on these issues um, at least i think but you know depends I, I depends how you implement it yeah i think that a great place like like the place where this book begins is with mm -hmm. an essay i wrote i think two years ago and it was in response to Derek Jensen's uh, wonderful article in how uh, uh, trying to make change in your backyard is pointless. And, and, it, it, and, and it's like he was advocating for political change. And, of course, Derek Jensen's flavor of political change is more than writing letters. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but, <clears throat> yeah, kind of explodey stuff. But, um, uh, and I, I felt like the recipe book he was working from for how to make better change in your backyard was a really weak recipe book. And I felt like I could do 20 times better than that. And, and so that, so it's like a lot of this book is all about that, how to, so I feel like if people want to, uh, get an idea of what this book is about, that would be a place to start, uh, would, would be to, to look at that and, um, I know it's on permies and maybe somebody will provide a link here really fast. I, I, I know it was um, Derek Jensen's political change versus personal change or something like that. Uh, but that's, I, I think that that's, that's the core of this book. That's where it begins. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. I think it comes, I think both of us have had a lot of people in our lives who like care a lot about all the stuff, all the problems. It just seems like not much is really happening. And yeah, that's that's why I got on board with this is I want things to actually happen. You know, real quick, well, it's you and me and, and all of the people who type 30 seconds behind us or whatever they're doing. Um, <laughs> uh, the woman that was so very happy that I described. Yeah. She's got her bicycle. She's she's composting. She's she's on cloud nine, and I did not want to say anything to, yeah. to to harm cloud nine. I was enjoying watching this woman be so happy. Now there was two other presenters at the same time, and all three of them are on. Are, they're so happy. They're on they're on cloud nine, and I felt like the words that I had to say would kind of destroy their world, and I didn't want to do that. But all three of them were kind of like, you know what we really need? We need the government to give us lots of money so we can keep doing what we're doing. And so we can scale it up to do it on a larger scale. And, and, and I kind of thought, no, don't give them the money. Um, I, but what would be a thing, like, like let's, let's say that um, like we, could, we could put together a a plan we're like we could reprogram this woman let's pretend that's even a thing and, okay, and I like, have what some would, concerns about that but well sure. sure 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 we ought not even though we can I, you know, whatever but the thing is or like let's say we meet a second woman and she's like you know admiring the first woman and we're like well let's give you a recipe that's even better something that involves bicycles and um something that involves you know similar sorts of stuff now I was kind of thinking like, why not set up the composting pile at that person's house? You know, right, right. And, and because they're going to end up with a much higher quality product, assuming that they buy even a little bit of organic food. Um, you know, hopefully they're buying 100% organic or better. But you know, I would say that. And then why not do like a little tiny garden at their house? It seems like that would be so much better than like, let me take all of your compostables 
and put it in a trailer behind my bicycle. And then I'll stand on the pedals to get the bicycle to start moving, <laughs> carrying all these loads that I have to a place in Missoula. Um, and then I'll, you know, bring this compost, which I don't want anybody to use, uh, back to your house. Um, I, I think it'd be cooler if she could just stop at their house, take their compostables, put it into a compost pile in the back of their house, possibly stir it if she wants to or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and then have a little, maybe a little garden back there, just just like a, um, a, a five foot by five foot patch. Right. You know, and and then the compost that comes out kind of use, is used as like a bit of a mulch, a little side dressing on, on on the, the the garden. I mean, that I think that would be something that would be easier to do and provide greater benefit. Yep. I mean, it's like and, if you receive compost, like okay, I gave you compostables and you brought me back compost. The fuck am I supposed to do with this? And, whereas if tomatoes start growing and like, look at all these magnificent tomatoes and nom, 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 nom. And it's like, that's food, man. I can eat that. Yeah. I, and, and I think let's use people's passion. You know, if this person likes to make connections with people and go around and do that kind of thing, then great. Maybe there's a way to do that. Right. Grow a little garden at each of these people's places. Some people don't enjoy talking to lots of others. Also fine. They won't be the ones going door to door gardening at other people's places. But yeah, for, I think for each person, there's a way to, to take what they are interested in and what they're passionate about and to redirect it into something that is useful. So I think being excited about food systems is a big plus. And so when she's, packing around compostables she's trying to do compost that's that's a huge plus yeah. and being excited about bicycles oh i love that i i actually when i moved to missoula because missoula is such a bicycle town yeah um, i did not i refused to own a car of any kind and i did it went everywhere on bicycles that's the only way i had a little trailer to connect my bicycle that i'd go do my laundry with and stuff and and so i'm just super glad that that you know Yay, bicycle stuff, and yay, gardening stuff, all my stuff. It's great. It's just mm -hmm. that, uh, and I also try to ask her a question about, like, um, persistent herbicides. She didn't know what I was talking about, right. and so I just shut up. I just went silent, like, okay, that's cool. Don't want to rain on your day. And so I kind of feel like um, if you go to somebody's house and you do the gardening, you can go there on your bicycle and the bicycle could still be an integral part of the whole thing. That'd be great. Yeah. And, and, and then, and yeah, little, little garden. Anyway, so that was, that was my thought. Like, like I wish for her to do that instead, but I kind of feel like if I start to talk about that, then I'm kind of pooping all over her happiness. I don't want to do that either. Yeah. Well, I think both of us kind of have trouble going out in public sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's one thing that if I'm giving a presentation and you came to my presentation, I have no problem there. I'm going to crap all over your ideas. <laughs> right. But I went to her presentation. Yeah. And I kind of feel like it's, it's the her show, not the Paul show. And it's okay for me to ask a question or two. But while I was there in the audience, nobody knew who I was. I'm just a guy. I'm just some obnoxious <laughs> giant git. And so it's like, you know, I'm not going to take over. I don't want to do that. And and it's like, I don't know how many times I've been to somebody's presentation and they did recognize me and they said, oh, shit. <laughs> 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 and that was in the software engineering world, too. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, we won't be taking any questions uh, today. Yeah, <laughs> that. <laughs> so, all right. Hey, I think this is run on. Does, does there anything that says anywhere for you that like how long this has been running? I got nothing that tells me how long this has been running. It's got to be a long time. 84 minutes ago. Oh, man, we got to wrap this up. Okay. If you like this sort of thing, 
come on out to the forums at permies.com where we talk about uh, uh, recycling and homesteading and permaculture all the time. Bye. Bye.